All right, so today I didn't have much to upload, you know, we just got a new Jenna, but a few hours ago, this video was uploaded called Addressing the Drama. Very great title. I will use that as well. Uh, just <laughs> uh, replying to Addressing the Drama. That's a, that's a good one. In any case, Amazing here made a video. I think it's pretty good. I watched the whole thing. Uh, he made some points as to the very bad things that are keeping Grand Cross from being... Or they, they are really putting Grand Cross down and have been for uh, some time. Mainly this year. I feel like this year has been a very backwards year for Grand Cross. Which is really funny because they, they did this whole thing where it's like, Oh, 2024 is going to be... We're going back to our roots or whatever they said. It was... Uh, yeah, 2024 has been great, guys. In any case... I want you to go over his points here. Uh, if you want to watch what he said, you know, I'll leave the link in the description for his video. I want to go over the points that he put in this doc. And actually, so th this is also like a response that, that like his video was kind of in a way like mine is right now. Because he also was like parroting what Sora had said in a video like eight days ago. So I'm going to kind of go over on on Amazing's video more than Sora's, but do keep in mind he even talks about Sora's video as well. So it's a bit of a, <laughs> a triple video we're getting right now. But so his first point, right, is it's a mobile game, not a full job, you can see on screen. The main thing that he talks about is how insane the activities we got recently are in terms of an infinite grind. And I, I dude, <laughs> I so much agree, it's insane. So, if you look at the plays, you open the, the screen, right? There's like the UI. The UI for Grand Cross is pretty good, right? But then you open this this right here, the play. And then you, you are, dude, there's so much shit on screen. And pretty much every single thing on screen is something you kind of have to do, except equipment uh, in reverse stage after you do it once. But it's like, yeah, speed, dude, everything. But mainly, his biggest gripe is uh, the Demon Lord fight which you do to do the True Awakening, which you have to do several, 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 several times a week if you want to actually keep up. I mean, you could just do it though once a week. Are you going to True Awaken anytime soon? Probably one unit every millennia, right? And the stage four of Bird, which by the way, every, everyone's going to get a stage four here probably at some point. This is only the stage one of the Relic upgrading. So, be ready for that, right? Stage 4 of Bird is a very annoying fight, and you have to do it, do it, do it. It's like a very challenging fight that you have to keep on doing. The way that they do challenge difficulty events in this game is so bad if you compare it to other games, where a lot of the times if a difficult boss is something you're, you have to strive to beat, it's just a one-time thing. You get the reward, maybe there's some other rewards for like doing a few more times, like on Dokkan, if you beat at a certain stage, it's like, oh, do it with this category as well, and then you get like the five stones or whatever. There's that, but in Grand Cross, it's like, you have to do it every week, the same fight every single week, or in the case of these two activities in specific, you have to do them several times a week to be able to keep up with PvP. And yeah, it, it's terrible. The activities they release here are just complete garbage. And uh, I, I, I'm, I'm going to go back to this point in a bit because it relates to the next one that he has. So uh, his, his second point in his document is, OCs are not hype and will not bring new players. Now, when he starts talking about this, he also talks about the fact that there's like a wall, right? There, when you're a new player coming to this game, and the reason why this game has no new players, essentially, is because of this wall. You look at someone like me or him, they have like a really high box AC, or like, bro, how am I supposed to ever get to this point? I'm never going to get there. It feels so overwhelming that you don't even want to start playing. And that's very true. And I think what is even worse is when you, let, let's say you, you don't even know what box CC is, right? But you pull the new Balder, right? You pull this guy, or not even Balder. You pull on a regular banner, right? And you pull, well, well who's in banner right now? <laughs> uh, okay. Let's say, let's say you pull, uh, let's say you pull Tonar, right? Who's a character you don't even know. 
but you see her on the tier list and she's pretty high because she's good for dogs right and you're like okay so where's Tona? what do i have to do to get her up to be able to use her right there is so i, I hate sorting this game okay there is so much going on you have level 100 super regular awakening super awakening true awakening you have alt levels which fair every game has but you have holy relics you have the costumes you have to upgrade the costumes and you have to upgrade the relic dude is this just one character this is one character right how many characters are in the game now you don't have to do it for every character but as a new player you're like so how many of these characters do I have to do this for? It seems like such a, a, sink, a time sink for one character, and it is. So, that was a big point that he did, and I agree. Uh, the OCs part. I will have to say something that, as the number one <laughs> OC, as the self-proclaimed, and also proclaimed by my comments, number one <laughs> OC hater, I, I understand why they're going with so many OCs. Like, I, I get it. You need, to, you need to see that Grand Cross has changed overnight, essentially, when Genshin released. And I'm going, I'm going somewhere with this, I promise. When Genshin Impact released, it was almost like a, a switch was flipped in the entire game. And if you, were back th if you were playing back then, you know what I'm talking about. That is essentially almost... Oh, at the same time where the game started going down. They started making more systems. More importantly, they announced Origin, which is obviously a Genshin knockoff, right? But these OCs, I see what they're trying to do. Genshin is an OC game. And so they think, oh, if we also make this whole like story with these original characters in the game, like Ragnarok, oh, we're gonna promote this on YouTube. And everyone's gonna be like, oh, I wanna play this game for these original characters. Just like Genshin, it's just like Genshin. No, it's not like Genshin. Do you know why it's not like Genshin? For one, the demographic that plays Genshin is five years old, bro. But for <laughs> Genshin players, they don't have this wall. If you start playing Genshin or or Star Rail, or Star Rail, I don't know about ZZZ, I'm never gonna play the game. But or Star Rail, two games I've played. Mainly Star Rail, I've played much more Star Rail. There's no wall. You go through the game, and the things you do are so simple. The game is made for babies. Those games are made for casual gamers. People who play Candy Crush. This game, we just talked about it. How much shit you have to do, bro? There's such a wall. No casual player wants to have this wall. Stop them from playing the game. This game is designed for freaks not i mean genshin players are a different kind of freaks for freaks like me this game is designed for freaks like me that like to play games non-stop genshin and star rail i don't know about zizi but i assume so because it's just, the games are the same they're designed for people who like the idea of games <laughs> they like playing games here and there right they're not gonna play this game they're not gonna fall in love and, and, and jerk off to hell. But you know why? They won't even evolve her. <laughs> they won't even let get her to level 100. It's too much of a grind for them. So, I don't know where I was going with that. Let's go back to his point. <laughs> uh, infinite, uh, no, make the release schedule for OCs be like one every two months. Just cut them off from the fucking game, bro. Okay, they don't have to cut it off. But uh, but yeah, it, it was too many in a row. I, I don't think that they... I think that... What did he say? It was one every two months? That's fine. The problem was it's too many in a row. Let's say... Because if you go on the App Store right now, this is a mobile game, right? So you go on the App Store, you go on the Play Store, the game isn't even called Seven Deadly Sins Grand Cross anymore. It hasn't been for a week... For... I was going to say a week. For years. If you go on, the, I'm, I'm going right now because I want to check, uh, fact check this. If you go on the Play Store and you search Grand Cross, it's not even called Grand Cross, it's just called The Seven Deadly Sins. 
But the picture you see is this blonde woman you've never seen in the series. So you're downloading a game called The Seven Deadly Sins and all the available banners are Jenna, which you probably don't even remember who she is. She shows up for like two minutes in the story. Who the fuck is this guy? Oh, this bitch is sexy. But who the fuck is she? You know what I mean? And then you have this banner. It's like you don't even know what is going on. You want Escanor. You want Meliodas. You might even want Merlin. You don't want Baldur. You're a player who just downloaded the game called Seven Deadly Sins and you... You know who the dude's Baldur? You know who that is? So. Again. My conspiracy is they want to be Star Rail. They want to be Genshin. Because those games make a lot more money. But they make money off of people who don't... Don't have the prowess to get 15 million boxes in Grand Cross. Some of those that play that game might go the crazy, crazy grind of using their resin once a day, right? That's insane for them. 20 minutes of gameplay. It's no Grand Cross player. That is no Grand Cross player. Infinite grind, it does the. Point four, by the way. Infinite grind endgame is bad for the game. Essentially harping on, again, on the same uh, stage four of Bird and uh, Demon King thing. The thing is, again, they completely shut off the game. This completely... I'm trying to form a phrase if I was swearing too much. I already did, I already did my, uh, my three of the video. I think I'm getting demonetized after, after one more. They shut this game off completely from being accessible to casual players. Like, again, players that would be inclined to play Honkai Star Rail. With activities like these and more, like Holy Relics? No. <laughs> no. No Honkai Star Rail play uh, player would be able to <laughs> get a Holy Relic in this game, bro. It's too much, it's too much grind, right? This right here is the epitome of Grand Cross. This activity right here is an activity that you have to do a billion times. It sucks every time. It's not fun. And you have to pay coins every time you go in. True Grand Cross right here. This, this, this activity. Uh, <laughs> it's, nothing encapsulates the game more than this bastard. I feel no reward from playing this activity the true awakening system is garbage has been garbage and it's a plague on the game but you know why they released this do you know why it's because of this right here is it is it right here you already buy it <laughs> i haven't been buying anything because i don't i don't really play the game or i haven't been playing because the game is garbage it's somewhere here they it's somewhere here. They sell the thing. They make the activity a terrible grind you don't want to play because they want to sell it to you. Like, right now, you can't really buy Holy Relic upgrade materials. It's still at the... How lazy are they? It's still at the bottom right! It's still cut off from the screen! The option to upgrade the Holy Relic, how lazy are they? You still can't buy this material but soon enough you will be able to this is why they want you to buy it with real money this is why the system is terrible it's not enough that they make money out of the gacha which is where most gacha games make the money from they also want to double dip and make money off of the grind being terrible uh make a uh, floor four bird and demon king be weekly reset content again uh, I, i'm just gonna be repeating the same thing don't make demon king infinite grind Again, same thing. True Awakening should not need SA coins or LR coins as a separate Awakening system. Very true. I don't understand why LR coins are used for True Awakening. It's meant for LRs. My only reason why I would think they, they put LR coins into that system was because they wanted to have an excuse to give LR coins in other places, like for example, is there a regular boss going on? I don't know. Like an activity like this, right? 
it's not right here, but it, it might have LR coins, right? But without making LR super, super, super easy to get, so you still need to use them for something else, that's my only, that's literally my only reason I can think of, and I think it's a dog show reason, so. <laughs> uh, Chaos Battle needs to be fun, not just meta units on bad teams. Making increased stats for a specific year one characters so that they are more than, or they're more used, sorry. So they're used more than recent. I'm reading off of my actual recording software because I'm blocking the actual video from my screen. Uh, so that they're more used than recent characters. Yeah, uh, I have not played the most recent Chaos Battle because I was busy working on my new channel. Uh, so I, I don't know how bad it was this time, but I assume it was the same thing as ever. Chaos Battle is a game mode that I love. I think it was a great idea. It's just boring because it's always the same thing. It's always going to be you put either Askinor with some Dogsha units or you put another good unit with some Dogsha units so that that unit can carry. Sometimes, sometimes you even put two good units with two Dogsha units. So... It's pretty much the same thing. Sometimes there's some fun stuff. Sometimes, but it's kind of rare. I think that the issue that Grand Cross has with that is less of the game mode being bad and more of the game being bad. Now, hear me out where I'm going with this. Uh, not the game being bad as a whole, but with unit balancing. Because if you look at a game like Epic 7, they buff older units to make them more competitive viable. Like, the game is not perfect, right? Epic 7 is not a perfect balanced game. Far from it. But at least they somewhat try. So a character that has been released already, like Hell, she was good. She's still okay. So she probably wouldn't be buffed because she doesn't need to. But for example, a character that's completely, you know, thrown out, like Bon, right? He's pretty much gone from the meta. Like, he would get a buff if this was Epic 7. He would get, like, a minor buff that would make him somewhat viable. Maybe not OP. Sometimes OP. Sometimes they get buffs that make them OP. Sometimes they get buffs that make them, honestly, still dog shit. But sometimes they get buffs that make them good enough that they're usable. This game doesn't get that. And then what we get instead is somewhat of a band-aid fix. Holy Relics. Holy Relics are sort of a band-aid for buffs. They hardly ever actually make a difference. To be honest, like, Holy Relics are just a, a band-aid. Some characters like Nanashi, like, yeah, he got such an OP Holy Relic that, dude, crazy, right? But most of the time, like, it's, it's just not how it goes. Characters sometimes get a Holy Relic that makes them a little bit better, but it's just never good enough. The core root... It's not into, like, making the passives better. It is, okay. Somewhat it is, but it's mainly stats, bro. New characters have such higher stats than older characters, it just makes them look like babies, bro. It's literally Hydrogen Bomb versus Crying Baby. So you, you have a new character, new quote-unquote character, like Jenna release, and she's barely usable because her stats are so bad that she drags her team down. And, um, I mean, when we get the <laughs> Stranger Things collab next week, uh, maybe she'll be good, because all the human characters in that collab are gonna get the attack related stats, but I don't know, man. And it's such an easy fix. Just buff the stats. You don't even need to make her good on the level of the UR festivals. Just usable. And that would make a world of difference for so many characters. They don't want to, though. And they won't. So. I've given up. I've given up on this fight. A while ago. Uh, a festival banner should have better featured units. Why is Green Tonar on banners in 2024? I'll be honest, I somewhat... I have and half on this point. Uh, the more recent festival banners have been absolute garbage, but it's... What you expect is the OC banners, right? Like, yeah, this banner is just horrific. But most of the time, festival banners are good. The rest... The, 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 is it every seasonal festival banner has been garbage? I don't remember how Gaffer's banner was, but... 
Yeah, some of the more recent festival banners we've got, like these two OC festivals, have been bottom of the barrel, just the worst of the worst festival banners we've ever seen ever. And that sucks because the characters were good. I mean, especially Tonar. Tonar is good. Or sorry, Tor, whatever. Same shit. Tor is good. I'm not taking that away from her. And people, people always come back like, oh, you don't like OCs, but you're going to use them, right? Yeah. Re okay, I can't say that word. Dumbass. <laughs> the unit, the not the character, the unit is strong, right? So obviously dipshit, I have to use the character, the unit. The character, like Escanor or Meliodas, is what I would like to use. But I have to use the piece of shit, blonde bitch, that is actually strong. I don't have anything against the actual, you know, Tor character. Just, just wanted to make it a little more aggressive. But yeah, the, the festival banners, the more recent ones have been bad. But I, I think banners don't have to be full, complete of only the best units in the game. Yeah, I have some really good units for people to chase, right? But I don't think every character on the banner has to be the best thing ever, you know? But yeah, it, better than this, it should be for sure. Uh, coin shop deserve an update, please. Like, uh, actually, though, no. it's crazy because I saw someone get ratioed on one of my Twitter uh, posts, or maybe it was in a comment on the video. Someone had said, maybe I can pull this up. I'm gonna try to pull this up. One second. Okay, I found it. So I made this uh, tweet right here. It was uh, this is what being a Grand Cross player felt like for the past two months. If you don't know, it's a meme that's going on on Twitter. It's the, the filler Naruto song. I can't play much of it. We're gonna get copyrighted. It's the Naruto song that's like always played on filler. You know the one, right? And uh, this guy commented back, uh, say, yesterday I watched your video about Blazing Shining. Well, I mean, I got this is an old, I was like, did I post this? No, this is an old video, I guess. Blazing Shining down because the developer is not carrying and praising Grand Cross. This was three years ago, yeah. Do you now think Grand Cross is starting to go same path Blazing did, or is that Marble still much better than Gree? I replied saying, Grand Cross ain't shutting down, it makes a lot of money from Top Whale still. I kind of didn't reply to his to like his full question, because I, I couldn't be asked. I guess I could reply now. That, this doesn't have to do with the coin shop thing, but... Uh, I don't think Grand Cross is as bad right now as Blazing was. Because I'm telling you, Blazing, when it was at like the bottom of the barrel of shutting down, bro, they had given up, bro. <laughs> like, Grand Cross is slow right now, Blazing had given up. In any case, uh, but it's pretty bad. But he said, right? So that, yeah, but overall, we just say it's still the same game we held as best in Yugacha. For sure not. Uh, for example, I remember one big selling point of Grand Cross being coin shop units, which nowadays are truly totally ignored. I would say, I'll still say Grand Cross gives good free to play rewards, but vid comparing it then and now seems interesting. Okay. So I replied to him, right? Genuinely asking. When did the coin shop units become the big selling point of Grand Cross and ratioed him? Not big ratio, just six likes. Bro, you weren't there! You weren't there! I'm sorry, you weren't there when Grand Cross was actually like the best gacha ever. You just weren't there because the coin shop was in fact a huge, 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 huge selling point for a lot of players. Back then, the coin shop was so good, and no other gacha game was doing the like. Like nowadays, almost every gacha game has a, a similar system than Gr that Grand Cross has now with the coins, sometimes better. Grand Cross was like a pioneer in how good it was. Some some games already had it, like a system like it, but Grand Cross had the best out of all of these coin shop sort of systems that works with the gacha in conjunction of like dupes for the gacha characters. It was next level. The characters from the coin shop were the best around. Where is it? Is it this one? You can get the... These were the best characters in the game. And you could just get them from the coin shop. You weren't there, bro. You just weren't there. I'm sorry. You missed it. You can't go back. I'm sorry. You just weren't there. These were the best characters around. And when the, the coin shop... Is it this one? Commandments were coming out. It was so hype. It was so hype. They never released Grey Road. <laughs> it was so... 
He was so hype. Esther also was so fucking hype, bro. You just weren't there. I'm sorry, you just weren't there. So, this is a long gone thing Red Cross is never go back. It's not never gonna go back to. And I think it's because, honest opinion, they don't give a fuck. But second, I don't think that they have the resources anymore. Back then, they still released two characters every two weeks. Now we get one. It's half the units we used to get, right? I think they had way more resources to allocate to characters that are pretty much free to play. Like, these were free-to-play units. You cannot convince me otherwise. These were free-to-play units. And they don't have the resources anymore. Uh, that's... As in, they still make the money, but the money is not being allocated to the game. It's being allocated to Origin. To the CEO's pockets. <laughs> Mainly to Origin and the shitty idol game, right? They want to make... They want to be Genshin. This is this is the same point that I had before. They are making a Genshin ripoff because they saw how much money Genshin made, and they wanted to make their own. So they abandoned it. They didn't abandon this one yet, but they somewhat abandoned this game, so they can put all resources into the Genshin ripoff, so they can make Genshin money because they really believe that they can. They won't. They won't, unless the game doesn't have these shitty systems. Like for real. If Origin comes out, it cannot have these systems. Because the kind of player that plays Genshin Impact would not have the mental capabilities of crafting a Holy Relic. <laughs> I'm memeing, but it's like... You get what I mean, right? Like, people who play these sorts of, like, games, casual games, they feel overwhelmed by even opening Twitter, bro. Let's go back. <laughs> Let's go back. I, dude, I want to say so much more, but the video would get actually stricken down. I'll, uh, okay, final point. These are the type of people <laughs> that get scared to open the door for their DoorDash. All right, let's go. <laughs> uh, okay. As a next point. Geared PvP needs a reason to be done. Very true. Geared PvP is dog water in terms of rewards. I prefer playing geared PvP personally. But you... I don't know about global. But JP? Hard to find real players, bro. Very hard to find real players. Because no one's playing it. Why would you play it? All you get is this. This terrible shop here. That's it. That's all you get. It's just terrible. Back in the day, again, you weren't there. I'm sorry, you weren't there. But people played a uh, geared PvP to that guy that said that uh, when was coin shop ever a thing? When, when did anyone ever care about coin shop? Coin shop, coin shop, whatever. Right here, people cared about this. Okay, I cared. I have every single weapon. And you do you know when I bought these weapons? Like four years ago, I bought these weapons. Before Global came out, right? All of these, all, every single one. They mattered. They mattered. Now they don't, dude, there hasn't been a single new weapon added to the PvP coin shop since the release of the game. It's crazy. Crazy, I'm talking about Global. Since the release of Global. I, I think that they did add, like, I uh, know Merlin, which was a character that was post-release and stuff like that. There, to me, the real release of Grand Cross was global. Uh, because that's when the game actually popped off in popularity. New player experience is still really bad. It needs a revamp. Give player story skip, free gear. I, I, I would have to repeat the same door that shit. I'm, I'm like <laughs> but yeah, if they want more players, they need to act like Genshin. They need, to, they need to pretend that their player base is people who get stressed out about reading mean comments. <laughs> Uh, this video, I'm, I'm speaking too many real opinions. I don't like to say opinions in videos anymore, but it's just too funny to me. Uh, 
Yeah, he says uh, more free to play 6 6 characters in the events. I don't know about 6 6, but yeah, they should give more, more characters. Do you know why? Most of these characters are dog shit, anyways. But for a new player, they could be good. They give characters, don't get me wrong. I, whenever there's an anniversary, whenever there's a half anniversary, a big celebration that actually matters, they give free characters. They are good. They give like Freya. Other characters, <laughs> I'm trying to think. Like, they gave a uh, Blue Grimoire before he got nerfed. You know, that was that was a good time. But yeah, I think that one good thing that they did was uh, that sentence went really crazy. because I'm, I've, I was speaking too much. Where, where can I see this? Is it is it in the book thing? One second. Oh okay, yeah, right here, right here. I like this, right? So there's the hero way thing where you get some free characters. And then there's this new thing where you can do some past events, right? They need to do more of this. This is good. And make the, make the missions easy. Make it so you barely have to click anything and then you just get showered with rewards. That will get some like casual gamers to be like, uh, my brain feel funny when I click button. You know, it's... Um, just how it goes, right? Just how it goes. Uh, put more feature you are fast, you are fast on you are fast banners, please. Yeah, the, again, the more recent fast banners have been absolute dog shit, but I, I have hope that the next one and following will be better. Hopefully, uh, dark and light festivals in the coin shop, please. Yeah, I don't know. I genuinely don't understand why. I mean, I know why, because they don't they don't care, but. This lineup of festival characters in the festival coin shop It's just so many old characters that don't really matter as much Some characters here Nah, bro, they're all irrelevant and uh Again going back to the coin shop, right? Regular coins SSR coins had so much value back then and The highest tier of coin now is UR coins and do you know what UR coin gets you? 3 LR coins. Or 20 of these, which will give you pretty much fuck all. Like, this is nothing, bro. It's sad. And then festival coins are just completely worthless. So bad. So bad. It's so bad. Hourglass and training dungeon stamina should be one every week for both. Yeah, the thing is, a lot of people freaked out when they started giving a a training dungeon stamina thing instead of giving an hourglass every week to be fair the training dungeon thing is good like training dungeon is a bad activity that gives good rewards right but i don't think that they did this because they were like oh man people really wanted more training dungeon xp they really just wanted to they really just want to screw us over, right? I think removing now the training dungeon key is actually not even the best outcome because it is a good reward. Like it is a good weekly reward. Doing people don't want to do training dungeon because it sucks, but training dungeon is good in terms of rewards. I had to go take a sip of water. My throat actually hurt. I haven't talked this much consecutively in a while. These days I make videos that are like short clips that get edited by someone else. I've been living the life. <laughs> nah, but um, yeah, training dungeon is actually not bad. It's just no one wants to do it because it sucks, right? So yeah, I, I think that would be a good change. Again, it's like it's a kind of a band-aid change, or sorry, uh, solution. The real issue is fixing training dungeon for real though. Like make it a, like a fun activity. They won't. They don't care. But that would have been better than actually. Uh, and actually just keeping it there and no one will do it anyways. Okay, so that was the end of his points. Like I said, uh, if you want to check out his... His... Uh, his... <laughs> I was going to say voice. His opinions about the things that he listed. Then I'll leave a link in the description. The rest that he has here is essentially... Uh, Sora. So I'm going to do a... Sort of like a faster version of Sora's video. Because this video is already like half an hour long. I also wanted to go over his because um, Sora 
He does have some weird opinions sometimes, but most of the time he spits. He be spitting. So I hate Grey Cross. <laughs> so, strong start. I hate Grey Cross. Uh, reverse stages haven't gotten updated in years, and only covers is in Chu and some Ragnarok stuff. Yeah, uh, again, I, I think that anything that won't make Grand Cross money has been abandoned as a game mode. Training Dungeon will not, would not make them any more money because it's a very casual activity, so you don't need the strongness to do. Why would they continuously update, uh, you know, Demonic Beasts? Because you need to summon for good units to beat Rat. You need... If you want to do it actually without pulling your hair out and becoming bald, you need to pull for Valenti. You need... You are Festival Meliodas. You need some good units to beat this activity, which will make the money because people are going to spend money pulling for characters, right? And they're going to spend money uh, buying the cosmetics. They're going to spend money upgrading cosmetics. So on, so on, so on, so on. Activities that are like... On the casual side, don't make the money, and I think that's why that they completely abandoned it. Anything that's not gonna directly make the money is cut off, right? But what they don't see is that player enjoyment also makes money. You know. Uh Training Dungeons is outdated. I just ranted about that, let's skip that. <laughs> As much as some people have grown complacent towards OCs, they're horrible for the game's health. No one's playing the 7 since Grand Cross for characters they've never heard about. Again, we also kind of went over that pretty extensively, but I gen genuinely, 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 genuinely think that that's the reason why they release so many OCs is because they want to be making OC game money. They look at games like I'll pull a chart, right? So, um, this website is called Gotcha Revenue. You've probably already seen it. And you look at this right here. So, this is the list of the games who made the most money for the past like two months. And you see like Zen Zone Zero, new release. So, kind of cheating, but Love in Deep Space. This is like a it's like a Chinese uh, <laughs> dating simulator. Crazy that they made this much money, but hey, the characters are original. <laughs> uh, again, Zelda Zone Zero, but global version. Naruto! Crazy that this game is not global, by the way. Naruto Mobile has been beating Honkai and Genshin, like, frequently, bro. I checked these charts. Naruto Mobile makes so much money in China, and they refuse to release a global version. It pisses me off. Dokkan Battle. Right? You have, um, I don't know what Monster Strike is, but then you have Honkai, Genshin, Nikkei, Wolverine Waves. Like, you can see, like, a huge part of the games that top the charts are OC games. But also, like, Dragon Ball, Naruto, you know? Dragon Ball Legends, Uma Musume, Mus Mus uh, Soul Leveling. Fate. These are IP-based games, so I, I don't know, man. I don't know, man. But I, I, I genuinely think that's why. I think that's why they tried to create, like, this whole thing with the OCs. And it just didn't, didn't work. It would have worked if they had made an anime out of it. On God, it would have worked. But if they had made a high-quality anime out of it and actually published on, like, TV Tokyo, you know, aired it, it on Crunchyroll, some shit like that, I think it might have worked, it would have brought some like attention and people would be like invested into these characters, but they didn't. They just expect us to be invested in these characters for no fucking reason. Uh, I was, yeah. uh, Ragnarok versus for I, I forgot what he said about this because I watched this like last week, but the thing is, for that's the apocalypse also does not have much of a fan base. As much as I hate to say it, because Final Fantasy Apocalypse is really good, it really does, and I think Percival is not very hype in terms of uh, attention that they brought to the game, viewer base, stuff like that. But give it time and maybe things change, right? Ragnarok? Give it time and things change is not something that can be said. There's no anime. People will not be downloading this game thinking, oh, I've heard of Ragnarok, it's so epic and cool. No. No. <laughs> no, no one has. No one, no one has ever heard of this bullshit, right? They will only hear about it if there is 
like an anime for it, or something like that. Fast over release schedule. Everything is that you are fast now. No more dark light, no more regular ones. Fast coins are essentially worthless for most players. It is. Push up is a whole other problem. Uh, yeah, fa fast. Co <laughs> the the you are fast dropping back 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 to back to back to back to back was stupid. I barely have the energy to even complain about release schedules anymore. Because the thing is, how it used to be, right? It was two characters every two weeks. So you might think, oh, it was worse then because you had to. Um, you had to put more gems down to get more, the characters, right? Because more characters released. No. What would if this was Grand Crossing 2019? What would have happened is Tor. Let's let's pretend that they would they would have been releasing these dog shit festival series. Tor would have had Balder in her banner, so you would have gotten both for the price of one. Not this bullshit. Excuse for putting off four extra festivals a year, is so they have a reason to make higher quality, um, higher quality characters, because people get so excited when they log into their 70s seventh festival. Again, I'm reading for the OBS screen for spring time. Let me actually just make this bigger for myself. Uh, yeah. Not enough of an increase in free to play gems for the average player to keep up. No rate increases either, even though that would be the first thing they would have to ensure before dropping more premium characters. You know, that's crazy. That um to this day we've never had a rate increase for SSR. It's crazy. Because I remember when Dokkan had their SSR rate increase, and it was so hype. Everyone was so excited for it. Remember when Dokkan had the GSSR? And I've always, 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 always coped! I had major copium that the reason why they don't raise the SSR rates is because of the coin shop. It would break the coin shop, guys. It would be completely unbalanced if they raised the SSR rates. Now, you can pull some bullshit on me and say, uh, uh, the festival banner is actually 4%. Shut up. The coin shop is dog shit. So, there's no, there's no economy to break. You ain't getting, you're, you ain't getting any much, any more richer from the coin shop from having more coins. Uh, the release schedule of festivals would not be a problem if it was hype. I'm gonna I'm be real, right? And you can still say, oh, you know, I'm afraid to play, I can't keep up, which is fair. I'm not gonna discredit that. But you look at Dokkan, and I, I, I like using Dokkan example because Dokkan has the most, like, craziest fan base of any gacha game ever. Their Dokkan fans would die for Dokkan's honor, bro. On God, Dokkan fans, Dokkan could strip them naked, beat the ever living shit out of them, do nasty things to them, and they would say, Thank you, Dokkan, for being so generous. <laughs> Very true and real. But the thing is, they drop festivals non stop, they drop LRs non stop, and people don't give a fuck, bro. You know why? Because it's UI Goku. It's Jiren. Dude, they are hyped. It's Beast Gohan. It's Beast Gohan. It's Gogeta, bro. They're hyped. They don't care. Right? People wouldn't care if it was hype. I'm telling you right now. But do you know when people care? When people say, oh, this sucks, this sucks, is when they drop Margaret and Kusok back to back. Margaret and Kusok. Or when they drop Sabnak and Tor. That's when people care, when it sucks. <laughs> nah, but yeah, they should just give more, more gems. The thing is, the way other games would uh, fix this is, is simple, right? So, do you, you want to someone from your festivals? Okay. The hard activities will give you currency. So let's say every week we beat Rat, instead of getting this piece of shit, 
we'd get gems as well. That's how they would do it. Not Grand Cross. Not Grand Cross. Uh, I don't remember if he has more. Yeah, he does. Please make season festivals regular festivals so we have a use for our worthless blue the one ask in our coins. Seasonal festivals are hilarious. They're just hilarious, bro. I, it's crazy. Uh, two new characters a month, sorta. We need to have more than one character release on the 600 banner, maybe even bring back free banner units on festival releases like they used to. Again! Again! They might say, like, they used to release two characters every two weeks. It was a great system. Now they release one, so you're getting half the value when you're summoning. It is what it is. And I don't think this is something that they're ever going to change or, I guess, fix. <clears throat> because I genuinely do not think that they have the resources, the devs, right? Not the company, the devs have the resources to do that anymore. That, that's what I think. That's what I think. Uh, costumes are still insanely overpriced and the entire system overall is just mega predatory. I very much agree. I I'm gonna leave uh, on this. Um, my, I think I'm gonna have a brain aneurysm if I keep talking, so I think I'm done. If you want to watch the rest of this video, I'll leave it in the description as well. Uh, let me know what you guys think. Of what part? <laughs> I really hope, I really hope I get, I get some comments about the, uh, the funny comments I've made about other gacha players. It's all jokes. It's all in good fun. It's a little real, but mostly jokes. Ah, who cares? Who cares? Anyways, um, I'll be back to my hibernating on my other channel until we get some real content in this game. Bye-bye.